Hey guys, welcome to a Saturday in early January 2020. Let me put this down a little bit. Um, we're going to do another one of my episodes called Blues Road Trip. And this time we're going to see Catfish Keith. I don't know if you've ever heard about Catfish Keith, but um, I first heard of Catfish Keith watching a tutorial on slide guitar blues. I think it was a, one of those Stefan Grossman uh, productions. And uh, after that, I noticed that um, as the spokesperson for National uh, Steel Body Guitars, um, Catfish Keith goes to the NAM um, convention, which is here in Los Angeles, every January. So. Um, I had the opportunity to first see him at a house party that I got invited to. Um, love you, Penny Cahill, uh, the manager and president of Fishtail Records. And um, she always makes sure that uh, fans of Catfish Keith are taken care of. Anyway, got into a house party, very intimate setting. And the good part about Catfish Keith is his music is going to get about as close as you can get down to the 1930s where somebody is sitting in a living room and playing guitar um, without amplification and just depending on their voice and their ability to the in, with the instrument. So after that, I got to see him at a place called the Fret House in West Covina. Um, good little venue. It's down in the basement. Again, a very intimate venue. And um, there's a record store in the area and a couple other vintage stops, shops that you can go through and try to find pieces for your guitars. But anyway, uh, I'm going to see Catfish Keith tonight at um, the Fret House in West Covina. And I'm gonna run down there and on the way maybe grab a little footage here and there. Hopefully I'll be able to talk to Penny uh, or Keith or both and kind of get a little tidbit on where he started and what motivated him. He's uh, been prolific in the albums he's produced uh, and released and um, he's got a new one out right now that's up for been nominated for an award so i am going to get a copy of that i'm also going to try to get a couple of things signed and we'll see what we can do for a lucky subscriber so anyway i'm gonna turn this up and you can hear the slide on there he's really good with the slide anyway i'm gonna get the car loaded up and i'm gonna get to west covina for a show this evening see you in a bit okay here i am in the old town Covina seems to be a lot of redevelopment going on here and a lot of resources being put into these buildings and then right in the middle of it all at 309 is the frat house and um, a lot of stringed instruments hung up here guitars and violins and the like and then there's what we're after so there's the store here again Lots of different musical instruments, slides, picks, whatever you want. And then downstairs is, in the basement, is where they have their concert. So let's go in and check it out. Well, uh, I'm going to get going on the steel body guitar here.
Nobody wouldn't go my Johnson and his his music like uh, he recorded for a short period about you know 1927 to 1930 or so he made about 30 songs and he always sounded like um, he was gonna perish with every note and uh, he had a voice that would scare you to death make you cry and when he played the bottleneck slide it, uh, it just uh, cried out like a woman's voice. So, um, anyway, anyway, I want to play these songs for you guys, and um, and uh, thanks for bringing the kids too. It's cool that they could uh, enjoy the music and take the journey with us, little older kids.
ghost is his name Holy Rollers Holy Ghost is his name I am back home from the Catfish Keith uh, concert and um, if I can hold this, my hands are too full, hey check that out, signed by Catfish Keith. Um, pay attention to what's going on in the videos, this might show up at your mailbox sometime in the future if you can answer some questions. Anyway, uh, before I get back into that, I want to kind of talk to you a little bit about what's on the bench. I like to do that. You see this piece of wood? It come from the Al Wilson house on Topanga Canyon. And this bottle, as well as this one, came from the can dump behind Reuben Lacey's church in Ridgecrest. You might see this show up in an episode called Wall Hanger. And I've got a couple of these. I still have to cut this one. It's a Lord Calvert bottle. But anyway... So watch for these as well. All right, back to this. You can see uh, that Catfish Keys is an authentic blues guitarist, and the concert was literally like sitting in someone's uh, parlor in the late 1920s and 1930s. I played you a couple of songs in the clip. Uh, there was a lot more. If you see them, you're going to see um, uh, you're going to see 10, 12, 15 songs. You're going to see an intermission. He's uh, readily available to his fans, and we'll talk to you. Now, I'm going to close out this episode with some questions I asked. I got a nice interview, and he was so gracious. Penny, thank you uh, for being so gracious at the end of a long night. Sat him down on the stage and asked him a couple questions like, where did the passion start with you about, when did you decide you were going to play the blues with this type of style? Um, and next was, how are you able to imitate a lot of different artists and pick up um, what their music, the signature sounds of their music, incorporate that into your own style but yet not corrupt um, the uniqueness of what their style is and, and to keep that time period again, late 1920s, 30s, and early 40s. And then finally the question I'm really interested in all the time and you know it is, Tell me what you know about Sun House, because I know Sun House affected Catfish Key's career. So let's close out by looking at his answers to those questions. Don't forget to give me a like if you can, subscribe and get my notices, and I always appreciate your comments. So let's hear what Catfish Keith had to say. All right, Catfish Keith, uh, I love seeing your show. Thank you, um, man. Because a lot of the narrative brings so much to the music you play. So. The question I have for you and a lot of the blues players is tell me about the moment in your life when you were starting out in music and you just said, you know what, this is the music I'm going to play and this is the legacy I'm going to carry on. Well, I can remember exactly when that was because um, I think I was about 15 or 16 years old 
but I had already been playing guitar. I, I, I picked it up when I was about 12. I sort of had a false start with it by taking lessons and getting bored with it, put, the, put it away. And then when I was, uh, I let it set for about a year, but I saw a friend, we were at this party, I was 14 or so, and she, she pulled out a guitar and started just making up a song. And I said, oh, you can just make up songs? Oh, so that uh, it was kind of a revelation moment about how you need to approach music. You need to, it needs to be creative and you need to uh, just make up your songs. And um, so I picked the guitar back up and started to teach myself instead of taking lessons from somebody else. And so the, then once I started teaching myself some songs and getting into finger picking and starting to learn some repertoire and I was building songs and the, uh, I, I had, uh, I was really going pretty fast and then picking up a lot of music and songs and uh, learning from artists and getting tons of beautiful finger picking albums and blues albums and other kind of roots music. So I was headlong into it, just studying and enjoying the music. And w within about a year, I reached, uh, uh, it just sort of happened in a magic way where I, all of a sudden I could really play, uh, you know, pretty close to what I do now, really. And, uh, and it was like a revelation uh, that I knew it was a calling when I was 15 years old, that I knew I wanted to play music, I knew I wanted to make it my whole living, and I knew how exactly how I wanted to approach it too, and that's what I'm here doing over 40 years later. That You know, the one thing that, that I've noticed about your shows is uh, you represent the music of a lot of different people, and, and I hear people when they leave your show uh, talking about the artists and you you've helped them discover people that haven't been around for well it'll be a hundred years pretty soon yeah, and um, yeah. and I noticed that you're able to play uh, and keep their styles without you know taking the purity out of it how is it that you've learned and mastered all the different styles and nuances all these people you play well my approach really would be to uh, find somebody I love, say Joseph Spence is a good example. Um, you fall in love with their music and you, uh, I would totally absorb as much of it as I could in a very deep way, like intensive listening for forever until you just know it in your heart. Like, so when you, when you then go to technically try to play it, it's not where are the notes? It's just, what can I do with this song? And uh, then you take it to your own level and it becomes your own song and you have, in effect, recomposed the intent of the original artist so then it becomes your own original work, uh, seriously informed by genius musicians. Now, I personally have put a lot of effort into knowing about Sun House and and chasing down uh, Reuben Lacey and the people that <laughs> that uh, kind of informed his music early on, and then we've seen so many people after that. And I know uh, from reading about you, Sun House had a place yeah. in, in, in your music. So tell me whatever you can about Sun House, because I got a lot of subscribers. We love Sun House. Oh, I love him very much too. And he, his music, although I don't really play his songs uh, myself, and there's a reason, it's because it was so good at Death Letter, for instance, the song Death Letter, uh, he, it's so much his song that I never thought <clears throat> it was my place to even play it, because he played it, it was so identified with him, and and it, so that, that, that was his job to, uh, you know, look like 10,000 were down at the burying ground and all that, that bone chilling 
life-changing effect that his music had. Uh, it is so total when you hear that and you're just bowled over by the feeling. Your hair stands up and it's something that becomes part of you. And um, so I felt like I needed to just leave that to Sun House, that song, Death Letter. But as far as him being an influence and an icon and a figure that came along that changed the world, uh, he did. Because, uh, and he was just like working as a railroad porter, hadn't played in years, and they found him. They brought him back. Uh, they uh, got him guitars. They, um, you know, Al Wilson showed him how to play again. But then he, he got it back, and he was bringing this magic to people. And uh, he still had the power where he'd roll his eyes back, and, you know, the room. Uh, you, I can still feel the feeling right now when I first heard his music and was first affected, especially by Death Letter. All righty, thank you. Uh,